Hey everyone, welcome back. We're continuing our reading of the Tafsir. Let's continue. We were dealing in Surah Al Baqarah 2 154. And before we begin, Audu Billahi Mina Shaitan Nir Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Okay, it's exciting. So, let's continue. Is there anything greater than this life of the martyrs that includes closeness to Allah? All glory be to Him. Physical enjoyment in the form of delicious food and drink and spiritual enjoyment, which is joy, jubilation, and the end of fear and grief. Well, when you're with the Maker, you were definitely not going to feel that type of fear. You'll be in a network of security, which is something we all value, right? This is a life in Al Barzakh, the period between death and resurrection. Okay, another terminology here for us A L. B A R Z A K H between death and resurrection. This is more perfect than the life of this world. In fact, the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that the souls of the martyrs are in the crops of green birds that drink from the rivers of paradise and eat from its fruits. What's beautiful about that is, as a bird person, that sounds very nice to me. Then they go back to the lamps that are suspended from the throne. In this verse, there is the greatest encouragement for the struggle for the sake of Allah and being steadfast and patient. If people were aware of the reward of those who are martyred for the sake of Allah, no one would stay behind. Now what's interesting about this is that every country has a pledge that their people make. When you become a citizen, you enact in that social contract. Think about the times when they used to have a draft, right? Every faith has a history of that, and even the atheists belong to a creed, even if they unify, they will sacrifice what they can. I think that there's many scientists who would keep working until, you know, they died for it, or they would die for their beliefs if they were persecuted for them. So every field has that. A chief amongst his tribe, a king amongst his counselors, a captain that goes down with their ship. Everybody has this sort of end that has to be met if it's put upon them. So when it comes to religion, you mustn't be surprised. And if people act surprised, just what is your military doing? That is literally what your soldiers are told. So while you sit in your comfy house and you pearl clutch about something in an Islamic text that says you should struggle and not fear being a martyr, just know that there's soldiers right now fighting on your behalf, dying away from their families so that you can pretend to be outraged on your smartphone that was built by a Chinese slave. So let's just think about that. But the lack of certainty is what makes their resolve fail, makes them sleep more, and causes them to miss out on immense rewards. I've been noticing the sleep aspect because when I don't sleep, I become grumpy. But when your body becomes a accustomed to the schedule of the prayers, especially Fajr prayer, you don't desire uh, sleeping in. I just go to bed earlier, right? So I think that helps. You make sure your sleep is intact, but you shouldn't be napping all the time. And causes them to miss out on immense rewards. How could it be otherwise when Allah, glory be to Him, says, Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth in return for which paradise will be theirs. They fight in his cause, and they slay and are slain. Out Tawbah 9 one, one, one. Now what's interesting is, think about this, is that when you pledge allegiance, when we were little, right, we used to play, they don't do it anymore now, because now they are sort of teaching people anti-nationalistic forces, which seems kind of weird, and I kind of, I understand you want to hold your country accountable, but when you start bordering on the point of making people hate their own country and calling everything stolen land, you start to get a little bit weird. But in the morning we would recite, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, with liberty and justice for all, so you pledge allegiance. So wherever your banner tells you to go is where you go. We would say that and there's a reason why there's treason charges and other such things because you're not supposed to betray your nation. 
if people will agree to that with their social security with their tax benefits their title as a citizen of the United States government and under federal jurisdiction and abide by their laws oh, I'm not going to be surprised when a religion asks for the same thing when you drive your car there's rules you have to go left right here when the light is this color you do this people obey that and you might risk your life getting hit on the way to the road right you might get in a car crash and die for the sake of you being able to drive so you risk your life to drive if people have that sort of dedication towards a higher purpose towards the one who made them that's more understandable than the other causes that can be found in other categories right this verse indicates that there is bliss and torment in al barska as is confirmed in so many texts Okay, now we're in 155 through 157, Surah Al-Baqarah, that is. Oh no, is my pen empty? Oh no, it's not. We will certainly test you with something of fear and hunger, and loss of property, lives and crops, but give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. See, what I like about this one, too, is that it really helps me let go of titles, because people think your degrees, your titles, your job, your suit, your brand, your car, your watch, everything, your suitcase company, they're all these little markers and standards that you can hold and push in people's faces to be like, obey, you know, kind of like Pharaoh with his ankh, you know, just like, oh, obey, but it's, no, you're going to be tested, so once you realize that you can lose it at any time, when someone presents it in your face, it's like, okay, and, right, and, who say, when afflicted with calamity, to Allah we belong and to Him is our return? They are the ones on whom blessings and mercy from their Lord are bestowed, and they are the ones who are guided. See, this makes a lot of sense to me, because the more and more I let go of my marketing, where everything's about image and this or that, it's just, you let it go and everything falls like pillars into the ocean. And you realize when things come your way heavy, and you feel that pressure upon you, just know that it's temporary anyways, and it doesn't matter, and people will move on after two days, and no one can make everyone happy, so there's no point in trying to spend your time running around in circles on the carousel, trying to impress everyone. Focus on making sure your deeds are upon the record. That's what I feel. Here Allah, glory be to him, tells us that he will inevitably test us, his slaves with all sorts of trials and tribulations in order to distinguish the sincere from the liars and the impatient from the patient. Now I bet you someone's gonna say here, if Allah knows why must he do the testing? But also the testing helps us see what's around us. You either become the example or be made an example of, right? This is his way with his slaves because if time of ease were to persist for people of faith without any trials, it would not be clear who is who, and that would lead to mischief. Yeah, you know, when things get too soft, you get stagnant. You just feel like you don't have an aim. That's one of the darkest struggles that I've had and that others have complained about is when you're waiting, when these lockdowns to end and you're waiting, you just like, I want to get on it, but you are you have a roadblock based upon these weird laws and it's something strange to adjust to, especially if you're not someone who just is idle and sloth like if you're someone who's a go-getter it's pretty tough times for you right now the wisdom of Allah dictates that good people should be distinguished from bad people the purpose of tests is not to cause the believers to lose their faith or turn away from the religion for Allah will not let the faith of the believers go to waste but in this verse he tells us that he will test his slaves with something of fear of their enemies and hunger so here you should know that you're going to have enemies no matter how nice you are. No matter what you do, there is someone who's going to try to be opposed to you. Someone who's going to try to imitate you. Someone who's going to try to take what you have. It doesn't matter how much you hide or how much you brush away your authenticity. You might as well be real and trust in your maker and be sincere and live by your convictions. And know that when your enemies come, you'll turn to your maker. And when they do arrive, it's a test from your Lord. And don't lose your faith. It's really strengthening for people who want to be strong, who want to be strong. 
That is, he will test them with a little of these things, because if he tested them with extensive fear or hunger, they would be destroyed. But the purpose of tests is to purify, not to destroy. Exactly. Once we realize it's not our annihilation, if we get a dark thought that makes us think we're someone's trying to destroy us, think that's the dark arts, push it away. No, it's going to purify you. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to hurt, but you're going to go forward. It's very powerful. I really enjoy reading the tough series. It really helps us understand.